Yeah, so I'm supposed to do an introduction video and then a nice little piece of music and an animation to make it more professional, I guess. Let's do that. So I plan to do a new video, print something, and then this happened. This thread here is dead. And I noticed this was a very leaky extruder. And well, this would be the reason. And uh, this would be a great opportunity in disguise to uh, explain some things about extruders. Hello everyone! This is basically the first extruder that I got. And it's simple in design and I like simple, I love simple. Nothing can go wrong with simple except for everything anyway this 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 was a pretty good extruder after i made some really of some alterations there it used to come up come on with this the cooling block here and the fan on top and if something went wrong inside here well you have to disassemble most of it and uh, that was terrible, but the cooling only cooled this area here uh, and it didn't do that great of a job anyway. So I just removed this all together and just took the fan, some screws here, created some distance and this fan cooled the entire unit. That kind of worked. It's going, the filament's coming in here, then it's going through here. And then you have some trouble. Let me get a nozzle here somewhere. Uh, let me see a heat throat, a throat, a uh, throat. Like. So there it is, a little hole. And you had to push this through and try to get it in there. And with a little luck you would succeed. Anyway, and then you get to the hot end there. So, basically you have a lever system here. The center of the rotation is here, and this bearing with a groove in it just pushes against this sprocket, and this sprocket pushes the filament down into the, the hot end. But what would happen sometimes is, uh, well, there's a lot of pressure behind this cog wheel here. Sometimes, because you, well, you put, push this filament through a, a tiny hole, 0 0.4 millimeters or 0 0.3 millimeters, or maybe even less. And I wouldn't advise it with the, the Gito, but anyway. But this would happen. This would get a tiny bit warm, and then it would just bend. Maybe it wasn't aligned very well, or whatever. There was some clogging here, or... Anyway, it would bend like this, and then it would start to loop inside the extruder and not extrude anymore. Um, yeah, so I figured, okay, how do I solve that problem? Well, just screw in this, not this hot end here, right up to the sprocket here, very close like this. And there would not be any more bending, right? And I just uh, eventually I made it. Made uh, I made this. I got myself a six millimeter thread, drilled a hole through it, and the top I made it a bit of a funnel. So you could just easily stick this through here. And uh, well like that anyway so I, uh, there would be no more bending of this material it would go straight through that worked so eventually I had this and then I figured you know what uh, it's still getting too hot in certain areas and that's why I I added these two of them or so And put that in here and provide that provided for some additional cooling 
I had my own M M six millimeter thread in here. I had some cooling for the throat here, and I had some cooling for the whole extruder like this. Uh, okay, so that's basically my first experience with extruders. Then they came up with this thing here, which is almost similar, but I found out that there is some leeway here in this groove bearing. So I had some trouble with that because you stick this in there and sometimes it was just, it would just not get into the groove. So this extruder, well, I dumped it quite quickly and then they came out with this one, which was even worse. In my opinion, don't get me wrong. And then they came up with a new design. And this is some design where I think, well, they took all this and said, we're going to make some improvements there. And they did. And that's going to be this volcano nozzle and this E3D version, what is it, 9 or so? I don't remember exactly. So basically, You've got this spring here, and the head of this screw here is going into this groove. A little bit, little bit, but we'll be not by the hair of a chitty chin chin. There we go. So now you can adjust the spring tension with this screw here, with this nut here. Here's where the filament gets pushed in. It's a bit uh, hollow. This uh, sprocket here, it's a bit hollow. So you have more surface contact with, uh, with the filament. And it's very, a very fine tooth. So yeah, yeah, they thought things through. And this is a one in three gear reduction ratio because then you don't need a very strong motor to provide for this situation and it's more refined the motion is more refined so that's that's two positive things and you have a weight reduction to the extruder which is another positive thing because one of the reasons people use Bowden extruders is to uh, reduce the weight of the extruder why is that inertia a simple NEMA 17 stepper motor uh, does provide a bit of torque and stuff, but if you really want to move it fast, you need acceleration. If you print a square like this, for instance, this size, then you would like to print at 60 millimeters per second or so, right? But it needs to stop here and then move in this direction and accelerate. Well, the faster you accelerate, the less distance you have where it runs at lower speeds. So let's say, for instance, you have a high acceleration, then you would just use this area to accelerate and this area up to here to decelerate. And this would be 60 millimeters per second. But if your object, your extruder is heavy, that would impede your acceleration. Your acceleration would be something like this, for instance. This area would be accelerated to 60 millimeters, 62 seconds from zero, and this would just decelerate to zero. And the actual sprint speed you have for 60 millimeters per second would be in this area. So two thirds of the time you're printing at 30 millimeter per second, and one third of the time you would be printing at 60 millimeter per second, which averages to, well, let's say 40 millimeters per second. If you have a small object like this, you would not even reach 60 millimeters per second. You would print this at 20 millimeters per second or less, because you wouldn't even accelerate to that sort of kind of speed. So you need a rapid acceleration. And you can only achieve that if you don't have much weight. And that's where the Bowden extruder comes in. 
With this design, however, the motor is a lot smaller. They call this a pancake stepper motor, I think. So it, this whole thing, this is plastic. So there's a huge weight reduction in this extruder, which is another excellent point. And then there's the cooling, of course. Let's take a look at the cooling. Look at that. I printed this and I could equip this with a fan, put it over here. And this is available on my Thingiverse. There's a lot of cooling here. That's good. But let's first move to this thing here. This is actually what I did with this. They and besides, inserting filament now is just easy. So this is the design of this thing. Here's the filament, here's the bearing, and this goes in here. And here the filament goes in between. And you won't be having any trouble inserting this, and it will not be bent, and it will be properly cooled. Basically, <laughs> this one big brother, right? It's, uh, yeah, it's pretty good. And plastic doesn't conduct much heat, so it, this will not be get warm either. So that's just all very beneficial in my opinion. I think they thought things through very, through very well. As for the hot end and the throat here, I use these at this moment. The filament goes in here, gets heated along this distance, a very small distance. So it needs time to be melted to a proper temperature. And if this filament goes through at, and you're printing at 60, 70, 100 millimeters per second, it's not going to be melted well enough. So you could think like, okay, we increase the, the distance. Now you can print faster because you have a larger area where the filament has time to be melted. True. But if you run at 100 millimeters per second and you want to shove it all through a 0.3 or 0.4 millimeter hole or something, there's a lot, of, a lot of pressure there. And you run a risk that the melted material will be pushed up through the nozzle here, through the throat, and then you get clogging because this part is kept cool. That's a problem. So basically, yeah, there's certain advantages with this, but print speed, yeah, keep it low. For if you print something, it takes three hours or four hours. A difference between a long time and a long time. There's no difference. If you, you're going to wait three hours, you can wait four hours. If, what they also did, there's a heat break in here. Uh, with emphasis on the uh, term break, because there's a very thin area in here, a very thin wall where the heated part and the cold part are separated and there's not much conduction of the heat through it. It's just a very thin metal wall here and a very small distance. So this area here has the, the tensile strength to push uh, the filament through and this is molten plastic. So that's that's the whole idea. But screwing this thing in, remember to be very careful because too much force and this area will break. So that's basically the whole idea about extruders. I like this extruder. Tell me what you think. And uh, I'll be continuing it with a reconstruction of it and then start a new print. Thanks for watching and see you all later. Okay, so there's another slight detail I forgot to mention. Uh, that's pretty important. Like, if I just move this to the side, like so.